I'm James Dabberty, and this is Coffee and a Case Night. Today, team, I want to have a chat about a $2 million retention in respect of an insurance policy that was held by a bank. Right, so we've got this bank, and this bank sets up a number of accounts, and these accounts are handled by an agent, and an agent deals with a financial planner, and the financial planner essentially sets up a Ponzi scheme, whereby our poor investors over here are unable to get their money out of the accounts the bank has set up. And in short, our investors, our poor, <laughs> sound like a politician saying, our poor, our poor mums and dads, our poor investors need to recover. So what they do is they commence proceedings on a number of grounds, including trying to get that money back from the bank over here, right? Um, the bank resists, but there's a mediation and there's an agreement reached. And what I need you to understand about these proceedings here, these mum and dad proceedings, is that they are representative proceedings. So there's one sort of lead plaintiff, and there are about 190 other plaintiffs that that lead plaintiff is basically representing. Does that make sense? So, we've got our bank who manages to reach a settlement to this claim. And the bank says, okay, six million dollars and the thing's all settled. And everyone shakes hands and goes home. And the bank says, right, okay, we've got an insurance policy. Uh, we have to pay the first two million, but the rest of it should be covered because we're insured for wrongful acts, right? So the bank turns to its insurer and says, oh, hey guys, bit of news. <laughs> we settled this claim, six million bucks. We're reaching into our pocket for the two million. But if you could just send the other four, that'd be great. And what the insurer says is, well, no. Uh, tell us a bit more about these proceedings because it looks like there were 192 plaintiffs and a whole heap of transactions. And so it's difficult to characterise this as a wrongful act which would activate the policy. And so what it actually is is a whole lot of wrongful acts and what that means is there's a whole lot of $2 million retentions. And so what we need to do is we need to pay that $2 million uh, in respect of each of them, meaning that essentially the bank has nothing to recover from the insurer. The real short version is that the court agrees with the insurer, finds that um, the way that the representative proceedings were run, including uh, in a fairly complex further amended statement of claim, was such that each of these claims had a number of little transactions in it. Um, each of the claims, or a number of the claims, had different parties. And it was difficult to say that in respect of a number of years, huge number of trans well, significant number of transactions, significant number of different parties, that all those were one wrongful act um, that would activate Sorry, that would only once activate the insurance policy. What the court actually found was that each of those 192, say, instances was its own separate wrongful act in respect of which its own separate $2 million retention would activate. So a bit of a disappointing outcome for the poor old bank um, and perhaps a bit of an insight into how aggregation in insurance policies works. Cheers, look forward to another coffee and another case night with you soon.